huge sports fan. On. And well, he's that's, that's to... some power poker, but I don't know if it's going to work for him. He's pushed all in, obviously. Brandon's got to make this call with Queens, and he does so. They flip him up. Ian O'Hara with about 5.8 million is all in up against Brandon Ooh. Hall. He's sitting on 10 million, so this is a massive pot early in this final table base. I'm not saying you're not going to knock me up. I'm trying to knock you out right now. <laughs> Quick fold by Vinny Lima. And now Daniel... Buzz gone, picks up aces. Daniel says he has the worst seat at this final table, but that won't matter much if he keeps picking up hands like these. Goes up to 350,000. Yes, he does. David Farah, now the chip leader goes out. Getting a lot of folds, and now it's around to Brandon Hall, who's in second chip position, and he is Got an 8-4 diamonds, but he will call and stick around. Hope to get lucky. Here's the flop, a big ace, jack, 10. Three of a kind for Daniel, but a four flush there for Brandon. Huge flop for Daniel. Good flop for Brandon as well. These two players are second and third in ships right now, so you may see them be a little more risk averse than usual because they really don't want to play a big pot with some of these short stacks potentially going out before them. Well, Daniel with a three of a kind is going to bet 350. Brandon sticks around with the four flush with a call. Of course, if one of these guys ends up making what is essentially a nut hand, oh, like boy. say a turned flush, well, he might be willing to play a pretty big pot. That said, you know, Brandon has a flush here, and that's obviously a really good hand, but he's aware of the fact that there are bigger diamond combinations out there that Daniel could have. And Daniel, meanwhile, feels pretty good about his hand. He knows, obviously, that 850. flushes are possible for Brandon, but he's got the ace of diamonds, so he can either redraw to a better flush, or the board could pair and he'd make a full house, or hey, there's even one more ace in the deck. And he's just going to call it. So we're going to the river. Oh, my goodness. Another diamond. And that, of course, gives Daniel the big flush. Incredible hand. For Daniel, it must feel like this hand just keeps getting better every street. And now he's got the nuts on the river, so of course, he'd love to play a big pot now. Brandon secretly has to be cursing that last diamond. Oh, and here's the bet. Let's see the amount. Oh, 1.4. Very frustrating for a guy like Brandon Hall to hit the flush on the turn. Now, tough to call to make. He's going to make a nice solid lay down. Nice fold from Brandon there. Some guys turn the flush and get married to their hand despite it losing a lot of its strength on the fourth diamond river. Brandon, much too professional to think like that. We are starting fast here at the final table. And we move on a quick fold. David Farah, the chip leader, going out as well. And here's Joseph De Rosa Rojas. Joseph has a hand that a lot of players would like to raise in his position, but he's one of the short stacks and would like to see what happens with Vinny Lima before he starts entering pots without really premium hands. Well, Brandon with the button will make the raise with a king eight, makes it 350 to go. And the short stack, Vinny Lima with an ace 10 behind him here. Right, and this is what I was talking about. Vinny has a hand and a stack size that will likely result in an all in. And Joseph would love to see him play this all-in for his tournament life and maybe go out. Yeah, he's going to push it. All-in. Like he should. This is a well-played hand from Vinny here. Off to a good start, boys. So Vinny, the crowd favorite, will take that one down. Yeah, short stack, but he's got his rail birds that flew out here to see him play. Six players competing for this championship. Winner's going to take home close to 730,000. Action on Joseph De Rosa Rojas with Jack Nine of Hearts. He won't play. Yeah, I think he would raise that hand in normal circumstances, but at a final table where he's one of the middle stacks, he's going to play a little tighter. So nice fold, actually. And Brandon here will raise up a seven of diamonds to 300,000. Yes, he does. A few folds. Round to Ian, who has a pair of sixes here. Hmm, Ian's in the small blind, which is awkward, and 
I'm a little surprised he'd fold, but I guess for the same reason that Joseph open folds Jack-9 suited, Ian folds the sixes to a raise, which is they're trying to minimize the likelihood that they play a pot that results in them getting knocked out before getting a chance to ladder up. You know what? I'll jump in with you. Now David Ferrett with Jack-7 in the big blind is gonna make this call. 4-3 deuce, not much. Get a leaning tower of Pisa flop there. David's gonna take a stab at this with a bet. Looks like 450. Brandon getting nothing on that flop. Well, this isn't a very credible lead from David. When you're calling a raise, it's usually with at least medium strength cards. So when you try and rep the lowest cards in the deck, it's just not that plausible. Eight on the turn. Doesn't help David there either, but let's see if he continues to stab at a bluff. Well, if he does follow through here, it might work because Brandon's hand is not improved. And he's gotta be concerned that David maybe has something like a pair in a straight draw or a pair in a flush draw where Brandon could hit his hand on the river and either chop the pot or still lose. David Farah, the former furniture store owner, dusts off the couch and makes another bet Taking a stab, and it's gonna work. Nicely done by David. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of that bluff, considering the board texture and David's cards, but it does show that aggression pays when you're the chip leader at a final table, and that David is picking some spots as to where to apply it. Yeah, this is David's third WPT cash, all at Bergata. His wife's in the audience, bunch of friends. As we move on, Joseph this time with Jack Six of Hearts. He's from Venezuela. He goes out into Brandon, who has a beautiful pair of queens. He'll make it 350 with that hand. Into Vinny Lima, the short stack. Can't play a king three. Daniel with king four also going out. So now it's around to Ian O'Hara, who has a pretty nice ace nine of hearts. Ian on about 35 blinds has a decision between raise and call. He says he's a power lifter. He works out five times a week, lifting heavy weight. Huge sports fan. On. And well, he's that's, that's to... some power poker, but I don't know if it's going to work for him. He's pushed all in, obviously. Brandon's got to make this call with Queens, and he does so. They flip him up. Ian O'Hara with about 5.8 million is all in up against Brandon Ooh. Hall. He's sitting on 10 million, so this is a massive pot early in this final table, Vince. It certainly is. I'm sure the shove wins chips. I wonder with ICM factoring in whether this is what you want to do over a call, but Ian's a really sharp player, so I, I don't know, this seems close. Well, the flop is a five, four, three, two diamonds. No help there for Ian. Queen's out in front. Going to the turn, 10 of diamonds doesn't help Ian. He's in bad shape going to this river, needs an ace or a deuce. Otherwise, he's our sixth place finisher. Yeah, he would be out of here. Ian needs luck. Not gonna happen. River's a nine. Ian comes up a little short there. Pair of nines, no good against Brandon Hall's pocket queens. He scores the first elimination of our final table. Ian has to say good night. He's taking home 154,000. Play online poker for real cash and prizes at WPT Global. Sign up for free today using bonus code YT23 and get a free entry into a $100,000 guaranteed tournament. This time it's on Vinny. He's got an ace 10 this time. Likes that. Gonna make it 475 to go. Vinny working with about 30 blinds here. Let's see if he gets action. David Farrow with a pair of sixes. Hmm. Chip leader, mid pair. David has been Mr. Aggression so far at this final table. And it looks like that will continue. And he's going to three bet his sixes up to 1.175 million. And Vinny will have an awkward decision here. I don't think ace 10 is a hand we typically want a four bet shove for 30 blinds, but that also depends how much you think David is screwing with you. Yeah, Vinny getting that look. All in. That's what he's going to okay. do. He has shoved all in, and David with all the chips in the mid pair, you gotta think he's gonna make this call. 
So there you go. The problem with the Ace-10 shove is you don't have enough to make David fold often. I think I might like it better if Finney had slightly more. But instead, he's just going to play out a coin flip here with Ace-10 up against David's sixes. I thought you had Ace-King. I thought you had Ace-King. Would you rather me have Ace-King? Why? You said I had Ace-King? I thought you had Ace-King. I know you guys are cheering for me, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny, very aware that his opponents want him out of here. Here we go with the flop. It's a 10, King 5. Vinny Lima out flopping. The chip leader hitting the tens. Both these guys very stoic as the board runs out. Nine of diamonds on the turn. Vinny just nodding his head, saying, gotta swap one more card. I'm a big favorite. Can this be? <laughs> Let's go to the river. It is a goose. And that pair of tens hold up. For Vinny Lima, he's gonna double up here against Dave Farah, and you can hear how the crowd feels about that. Oh, sorry, it's not me. Yeah, David Farah, 48 I'm years sorry. old. And he is from Field, New Jersey. Plays the Brigada event all the time, the former furniture man. As the chip leader, Brandon Hall coming in second chip position with 16 million. As we continue five-handed, we see a raise here by Brandon Hall with a 6-3. Let's see if he gets action with it. Daniel Buzz gone with King Queen. Daniel is on a stack size where he's gonna prefer to call over raise here. If he was really short, he could just move in over the top, but he's much too deep with Brandon right now for that, and I think he'll mostly call here. This is his third WPT final table. He made two final tables in season 10, and he is back in a big way, and he makes the call. Here's the flop, it's an A7-4, helps neither player. And every time Daniel has made one of our final tables, I've come away thinking he played really well, thoughtful. And here he has king high on this A7-4 board, and he expects Brandon to continuation bet here very frequently, maybe even 100% of the time. So don't be surprised if Daniel refuses to give up despite just having undercards to the ace. Brandon obviously not hitting, has an inside straight draw, that's it, but little does Daniel know that Brandon's not playing ace nine, ace eight, ace king, queen, who knows? But you want to test him just once at least, makes this call. Four pairs the board. And that's actually a favorable card for Daniel's range. He's much more likely to have a four here than Brandon. And that should be concerning enough to slow Brandon down. As it does, he checks behind, and we see a eight of spades river. So Daniel, hoping that his king-queen is good, doesn't have much incentive to bluff, whereas Brandon, with six high, knows he's never good and can only win by bluffing. Of course, he's slowed down on the turn. Do you take a stab and try to pick up this pot with six high? I, or he just let it go? I would like the stab here. I think you can represent an ace that was being cautious about the four and check back on the turn. You can have a pair it's gonna between do it. the eight and the ace that's betting for value. And so Brandon here sizes his bet correctly. Makes it look like he's got a medium strength hand, just trying to get one more call out of a seven or something from Daniel. He's going to try to earn this pot. And Daniel now in a quagmire. This would be an incredible call. If you could possibly do it, not many players are in this situation. Yeah, Daniel nope, would be he's not correct gonna do it. this time if he called, but I don't think I would even like it. It would be optimistic to think King High is good there often enough that you should call and end up turning a profit. So Daniel got bluffed that time, but I like his fold, and I think he continues to play disciplined poker. Blondes are up to 1 and 200 with a big blind bandy of 200. Quick fold by Brandon. And Vinny, and now Daniel with queen nine of spades. Gonna raise up this button to 450,000. Do you know that Daniel Buzzgun went to college and he started playing poker in college? And he has a bachelor in professional golf management. That's how much he loves golf. 
I'm just right? surprised he finished college. He's right at that age where everybody dropped out to play poker, so mm -hmm. good for him. And David here making quite a loose call from the small blind with King Deuce suited. But he's been trying to mix it up with everyone at this table and push them around with his big stack. So looking for excuses to get involved. Not a big fan of this call, but we'll see if he can turn it into a profitable situation. Flop is an ace, queen, 10. Daniel hitting queens. So there you go, Daniel in front. Dave Farah hitting none of that. Yeah, Daniel with second pair checks back. Hard to get value by betting there. Deuce on the turn will give David bottom pair and a gut shot. And he's really looked for any excuse to bet or raise thus far this final table, and he's found one. Six hundred seventy-five thousand is the bet from David over to Daniel. And Daniel did not check back this flop, intending to fold to one bet on the turn, unless maybe it was a king or a jack or something. So on the deuce, he's gonna feel pretty good about calling here. And ideally, he'd like to see a blank river, or of course, you know, a queen or a nine to improve his hand. Oh, a jack hits given David Farah a straight. Very much not a blank. Unreal. Quickly getting the chips out and putting in 1.8 million. Yeah, that's a good observation, Vince. He acted very quickly there, and I question whether David would act so quickly and fluidly if he was uncertain in the strength of his hand. So something to keep an eye on going forward. Yeah. Problem is you only have a queen. And he's got to lay that down, and David Farah makes things work right there. He extends his chip lead as the Railbirds love it. Did you hire these people on break day? <laughs> Play online poker for real cash and prizes at WPT Global. Sign up for free today using bonus code YT23 and get a free entry into a $100,000 guaranteed tournament. Lines of one and 200. And he's going to move it up the 450 total. Joseph from Caracas goes out. And now Brandon, ace nine of clubs. Now David and Brandon are our two chip leaders. And so Brandon doesn't have much reason to bloat this pot out of position with a three bet medium strength hand. He's just going to call. Mini Lima, nine five in the big blind. Pretty junky. Gets out of the way. All right, ace queen versus ace nine. 10 8 3, two clubs. Awesome flop for Brandon, of course. David cutting out a bet that I don't really like. David doesn't accomplish very much with this bet. The board hits Brandon's small blind calling range pretty well. He doesn't have a club or any kind of meaningful backdoor draw outside of Broadway. I don't think he gets better hands to fold. I don't think he gets worse hands to call. So David with a ambitious bet on the flop. Wow, Brandon hitting his flush and he's gonna check it beautifully. Well, I've been wondering whether David has a brake pedal when he starts putting chips in the pot. This would be a really bad card to barrel. There we go, nice check. And the river card, a nothing five. Now I think Brandon should not only bet, but bet big and hope that David somehow has an overpair that made a cautious turn check, but will be stuck paying off on the river. And as we can see, David with ace high doesn't have a lot of reason to try and hero this river. But again, I like the bet sizing that Brandon has chose here and he has played an excellent final table so far. Right, you won't get the action there. David wisely folds. Brandon taking that one down. Nicely done by Brandon Hall. He Whoa. is 30 years old. Third WPT cash. Well, David takes a minor setback there and we'll have to give up the chip lead for just a moment to Brandon Hall. Action with Joseph here. 
Not gonna play. Brandon out. Now Vinny in the small blind. He and Dan Buzgin are our medium stacks with about 40 blinds each. And when you are 40 blinds deep in the small blind, you often start by limping. And I like that play from Vinny. Check from Dan with a jack deuce suited. Will bring us to a king four deuce flop. So pretty good board for Vinny. On a board where Daniel will expect him to bet pretty frequently and with bottom pair, I think Daniel will have to continue. Man, the bet's 225. Daniel will make this call with his deuces, keep him honest. We're going to the turn. And uh, it's another king, so just beautiful card for Vinny Lima. Disaster for Dan, too, because that king makes it much less likely that Vinny has a king and was value betting on the flop and adds draws that he can be semi-bluffing with on this turn. So if I'm Daniel, I'm not ready to fold in his shoes. And like you said, this is very callable. And he is going to do so. You're going to the river. And I like this call from Daniel. We're again staring at an opponent who has a now massive hand. He has four of a kind on the river. And again, that's a terrible card from Daniel. Now it's even less likely that Vinny has the king he's been representing all along. And there are probably way more combos of say hearts or five, six or, you know, 5-3 that he turns into a bluff than there are kings in his range. Taking more time. Reverse psychology move, of course. He's got the nuts. And if I'm Vinny, I go really, really big because the hands I'm betting are a king or a bluff, which means you're very polarized, and when that's the case, you want to go with a really large bet sizing, so job well done from Vinny here. He bets 2.5 million into 2 million. And that is going to put Dan in an awkward spot. He's just thinking that this guy's stealing it. No, I'm going to go out, and that's a nice fold. Yeah, he's going to fold and be right instead. And Vinny Lima came in as the short stack, and they're rooting him on here. 